Hello and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be having a look at the basics of aeroplane design. There's quite a lot of things to know about aeroplanes but we're just going to cover the basics in this tutorial. So to start off we're going to want to choose a uh, cockpit. What's probably best for this one is the uh, Mark 1 inline cockpit uh, as this gives us some flexibility. But there's also the Mark 1 cockpit as well which looks quite cool but uh, it doesn't have a very high heat tolerance so it's not much good for SSTOs. Um, so there's a few things to be aware of when creating planes. Um, you're going to need to be aware of the center of mass but also the center of lift and you can turn them on by going down into the bottom right hand corner and pressing center of mass and the center of lift uh, which currently you won't be able to see. So if we jump in and start making our first plane, we're going to want, as this is going to be an air breathing plane, so one that's flying at low altitude, we're going to want to snap on some liquid fuel. Um, and on the front, we're going to want to put an adapter. Uh, so there we go. Then behind this fuel tank, because we're using uh, air breathing engines, we're going to need an intake. Um, so if you go to aerodynamics, and get the Mark 1 Divertless Supersonic Intake and snap that on the back there. So this is the fuselage of our plane, pretty much finished already. Um, so now what we're going to want to do is snap a Weasley uh, on the back. And this is a turbofan engine. Uh, so this will draw air in through the air intake and mix it with the liquid fuel and turn it into thrust. Uh, these are good because they are very efficient and uh, will provide enough thrust for what we're doing. So now what we're going to, going to want to do is add the wings. Now this is the difficult part and this is where it takes a lot of consideration. So we're going to start off by making a fairly basic plane. So if we grab these wings, wing type B, and press X to toggle them on both sides. So there we go, we can see we place our wings. So you can see this blue indicator is cut. So this shows your center of lift in the direction that it will be acting. So we want this to be behind our center of mass. Uh, not hugely behind the center of mass, not like this, because this will make the plane uh, too stable. We won't be able to fly. We want it uh, about there. That's probably going to be okay for now. Um, and then we're going to want to add the elevators on the back. So if we snap them on there and there. So we've got these. And these will provide the control surfaces when we're pitching up. So these will change their elevation up or down um, and will allow us to change the plane. So if you right click on them, you can see that we've got some different options. So on the interior ones, we're going to want to turn off roll, uh, and this will stop the. This means that the internal ones will only pitch up; they won't do anything else. And on the outside ones, we want to leave roll on, um, and that will mean that it just makes the aircraft more stable. Um, so now we want to add the tail oh, and the rudder. So if we put a fin on there, this doesn't. This doesn't necessarily have to have a elevator on the back, but it will give us some extra control. So there we go. You can just leave this as a fin rather than putting this on the back. And it's just to give the aircraft some stability. Or we could use one of these, um, a winglet. And there's also some specially designed aeroplane fins like this one which is far too big for what we're doing so now we've got a pretty complete plane so now we want to get, go and add the landing gear so if we add one at the front we're going to add a basic tricycle arrangement where we have one at the front and two further back uh, so then use the medium landing gear and place those on the wings and we can see we've got a 
fairly decent looking plane. And we want these wheels to be just behind the centre of mass, not too far, but not too close, otherwise we won't have enough stability. Because the aircraft is effectively pivoting around this point. So we want to create a point where the lift comes off like that, and then it pivots around this point. So now we've got our plane, we can go ahead and fly it. So if we throttle up with the engine, then we'll he start heading our way across the ground quite quickly. And when you get, get to about 50 meters per setting, you want to start pulling up. So there we go, we can see we've taken off. Take the landing gear in, and you can see this aircraft is flying pretty stable, even with the uh, stability assist off. So throttle down when you get to about 200 meters per second, otherwise we'll start getting weird effects from supersonic speeds. So to turn the plane, you're going to want to mainly rely on your roll and your pitch, not using the yaw so much, as this is how actual planes work. So you can see what I meant by the fact we turned the roll option on the interior ones. So you can see as we're rolling, these outside ele elevators will uh, wobble around, but the interior ones will stay stable. You can use the yaw, but I only recommend using it for making slight adjustments, as it can cause quite a lot of instability in the plane. So there you go, we can see we've got a fairly stable little plane. So now we're going to have a fiddle around with the wings and the landing gear to see what we can change. So if you turn your centre of mass and your centre of lift on, take the landing gear off for a second. So you can see the centre of lift is important where it is. If we have the wings right up front, the plane will just flip out all over the place. If we have the centre of lift right on the centre of mass, the plane will be very unstable. Um, but if you're creating something like a fighter jet, you might want that. Um, so you want it fairly far back, but if you put it far too far back, it won't be able to uh, lift off at all. So now we can start having a look at what different heights will, will do to it. So having the centre of lift above the centre of mass in height makes the plane very stable. So this will fly very, very well, but we'll also want to... Um, roll back round to its centre point when you're um, rolling. Uh, so it's quite nice to fly, um, especially at high speeds. If we move the wings down, we get the opposite effect. So this become now becomes very unstable and, well, very manoeuvrable, shall I say. So if you know what you're doing and know how to fly planes, this can be really useful, especially for fighter jet sort of planes. But in general, we don't want this. You can also change the point, uh, change the height of the center of lift by changing the rotation of the wings. So you can see if we point them upwards, it moves the center of lift up. And if we point them down, the center of lift moves down. So on real planes, commercial planes, their wings will be at the bottom because that's the strongest part of their uh, fuselage, but they will point up like this, making them much more stable. So if we have, if we move the wings up like that, and then we stick some more landing gear on, you can see the effects this will have on the aircraft. So you can see we've taken off with no problem. 
But if I roll, it will want to naturally point back to the direction it came from. Making it very stable. So this is really good if you've got a heavy plane that you want to be fairly stable. But not much good if you've got a small plane like this that you want to be manoeuvrable. So you can see there it flipped back to where it was originally. And you can see I'm flying this no trouble with the stability assist off. So now we've done that, if we put the wings back as they were, we can have a look at how we can use landing gear on the aircraft. So as I mentioned earlier, you want your landing gear to be just behind your centre of mass as it acts as a pivot point. But if for whatever reason you can't do that, for example your centre of lift is very far back, so your wings are far back, what you can do is you can move the landing gear upwards. So this means that as the plane sits on the runway, it will be angled like this. Now this might not seem very much help, but this will mean that it will take off much easier. But this can be dangerous because it, you can damage the rear of the aircraft on landing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on plane design or space plane design, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I will try to answer them as best I can. And thank you for watching.